Okay, we need to implement this operator to multiply a matrix 3D by a matrix 3D. Uh, we're going to use test-driven development like we always do. So matrix 3D tests here. Uh, again, I want to be consistent with matrix 2D. So let's look at matrix 2D tests. We have here construction, rotation, matrix vector multiply. Oh! We did not implement matrix times a matrix in uh, matrix 2D because we were only combining one matrix. We weren't trying to do this. Uh, go back over here. This thing where we try to multiply two matrices. In fact, I think to make this even clearer code-wise, matrix 3D uh, translator will be translate like so. And matrix 3D rotator gets this, like so. And then here, maybe it's a little more clear to say translator times our rotator. Okay? And here we're essentially trying to combine two operations into one matrix and put that, that matrix there and then use that matrix against every single vertice. But we still need to implement this multiplication operator. We didn't try to apply two matrices at the same time um, to these vertices. So now we are. So let's go to matrix 3D. Uh, not vector 3D, sorry. Matrix 3D test. I guess I could have just clicked up here. And do test matrix 3D matrix matrix multiply. Okay, matrix 3D first, let's keep it simple, one, two, three, uh, I'll do this on the next line, four, five, six, I actually want to space this out, space it out, and then down here, seven, eight, nine, and we could just multiply this matrix against itself as a test. Maybe we'll do that. Just to keep it simple. The matrix. All right, matrix 3D. Result gets the matrix times the matrix. And let's say expect float equal result dot R0, C0 something. Control L, Control V, VB, Control C. Notice I'm grouping these up into groups of three. And then row zero, column zero, one, two, row one, row two, column zero, one, two, zero, one, two. All right, so what should these values be? We've kind of worked this out in previous videos, but let's do it again. Um, we have the matrix 1, 2, 3, <laughs> 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we're multiplying it against itself, so I'll just draw it out here again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oops nine like so now there's a couple ways you can think of this is we're applying this matrix we're doing linear combinations of vectors again we could we could say that we're saying one times this basis vector four times this basis vector plus four times this basis vector plus seven times this basis vector I'll add all that up and then and we'll get the result that way. Or we can do it like we learned in algebra class. Either way, we'll get the same result. I think in this case, let's just stick with the straightforward algebra approach. Now, I could uh, pull out my TI-82 calculator I've used all through my college days. But eh, it doesn't hurt to work this out by hand. Let's try doing that. So it's this row times this column. So that's going to be uh, from this matrix. It will be... 1, 2, 3 times this column will be, oh, not 4, 1, 4, 
7. So 1 times 1 for our green result, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 7 is 21. If you're feeling like this is going to be a long and tedious process, feel free to jump forward in the video. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 21 is 30. So our row 0, column 0 value should be 30. Okay, the next one, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do a couple more of these and then I'll pause the video and do them offline because I, I don't know if it's going to be worth our time to do all of them. This row times this column will give us the value that goes in this cell here. So again, this row, 1, 2, 3, and times this column will be 2, 5, 8, okay, 1 times 2. Get my green back up here. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 8 is 24. So 24 plus 10 is 34. 35, 36. So this value should be a 36. Let's do one more. We know. Let, let's uh, let's do a different row, though. Let's choose this row here and this second column. Okay, and the second column. Well, we already have the second column written down, but... I'm going to go the effort. Just, I think it's, if you're not very comfortable with matrix multiplies, you need to do 100,000 of these. I went to school with a good friend, straight A student, everything, but he would always mess up his matrix multiplies no matter what. And he said, Jamie, why do you keep cranking them on the calculator? And I said, well, there's one thing I know better than you, or I know I won't screw up, is multiplying matrices. Now watch, I'm going to mess it up here for you. Anyway, uh, this row, this column... Uh, let's do some practice. So this row here is 7, 8, 9, and this column here is 2, 5, 8, 2, 5, 8, and then the result will be 7 times 2 is 14, uh, 8 times 5 is 40, 9 times 8 is 76, Oh, it's not 76. I actually had to go look that one up. I bluffed. 9 times 8 is 72. Alright, so what's that going to give us? Se oh, well, let's just do this a long way. 4 plus 2 is 6. 7 plus uh, 4, 3, 11, 12. Okay, long day. I've been doing a lot of videos today. My brain is a little burned out. Please forgive me as I struggle with the small numbers, I'm going to mess that up. And look, I just messed up where I wrote that, didn't I? <laughs> that should be down here. 1, 26. Okay, now, offline, I'm going to work out the rest of these values. I'm just going to pull out my TI-82 TI and punch this matrix in. We're going to work out these values and put them up here so we can put them in our unit tests. Okay, I got my calculator out and... I entered the matrix and said to multiply, and here we go, 30, 36, 42, 66, 81, 96, 102, 126, 150. So the ones I did do by hand, I got them correct. Thank goodness. Notice the numbers are increase are getting are getting larger, increasing as we move along, and that's because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, we'd expect them to go get larger because these numbers get larger. All right, let's actually type these values in here. So looks like row zero, column zero is a 30, 36, 41. Uh, or no, is that a 41 or 42? That's a 42. I can't even read my own. Handwriting, uh, 66, 81, 96, uh, 102, 126, and 150. Okay, good. So, test-driven development. Let's let's see. Did we? I can't remember. I'm getting too far down into this. The Matrix 3D class. Did we even define the operator? Uh, matrix 3DH. It doesn't look like we did. We did the matrix times the vector, but we have not defined nor declared matrix 3D 
times the matrix 3D. So operator multiplication, const matrix 3D, reference left, const matrix 3D, reference right, control L, the, uh, that's kind of my cheap way of copying it, but it cuts it so that I immediately paste it back with a control V. And let's take that down there. Let's go to the INL file. And we can collapse all these. Control MO is the hotkey that'll do that for you automatically, but my recording software intercepts that hotkey, so I just have to do it by hand. Control V. Let's paste that in there. We no longer need to declare it as inline, we already declared it inline right here. Uh, this is a, no, it's a non-member, that's right, non-member operator, so we can return matrix 3D, not implement this operator, uh, let's be sure that engine tester is selected as our startup project, we should get a lot of errors here, which we do, we do, good, so it looks like all those failed that we expected them to fail, so, <clears throat> Let's look at this this way. I could, uh, and I've mentioned this before when I've implemented this operator. I could write a couple, couple for loops to handle a bunch of matrix multiplication. So if I had a 10 by 10 matrix, then my for loop would adjust to a 10 by 10, or I could do a 3 by 3 or a 2 by 2 as we've seen before. But I'm not going to go to that effort because I. Uh, that, well, first of all, we're inlining this code. I know I'm going to call the, upon this code often, so. I want it to be as fast as possible, and if I'm dealing with for loops, like for int i is 0, i less than whatever, and I have to deal with all those iteration variables, that's going to take overhead and time as well. Now, a little side note I must give for that is compilers are pretty smart these days, and sometimes, well, actually a lot of times, they'll identify a loop that they can, aka, unroll, meaning they'll see, oh, we're only going to do three operations, or three iterations, as would be the case with the Matrix 3D. So let's just copy and paste the code in to directly do that instead of allowing the for loop to execute. And compilers are free to make those decisions on their own as long as the end result is the same. But we're going to unroll the loop by hand um, simply because I don't want to leave that option to the compiler and I want to do it by hand and, and I'm just being a little bit picky, maybe too picky, who knows. Okay, how do we write the operator? Well, <laughs> Three by threes. You just wait till we get to four by fours, and we will get to four by fours in the computer graphics uh, videos. A, B, C, uh, D, E, F, G. That's a G. H, I. Uh, times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. All right. Let's let's first of all let's stub out a uh, stub out what we know we will need. We will need a left dot. Uh, I'm just going to say r zero column zero. This is going to be tedious, and we'll probably make some errors along the way. Times right dot r z r zero column zero plus. I'm just going to copy this. Control C V. V, V, and I'm going to syntactically try to make this make sense here. So this is the first row and the first column, so we need to fill out all the columns of that row, and then we have three rows of that, so I'll just dump that in there, and then let's, yeah, let's zoom out of here a little bit. Uh, I think we're done with that. Let's, okay, so, the left hand times the right hand side, uh, to refresh yourself on matrix multiplication, go look at Khan Academy, uh, the matrix multiplication videos there, but essentially, when we multiply two matrices, you need to multiply uh, each row times each column, and then put the result in the value of that cell. I'm, I don't want to step through all that right now, but I will, let me go find the Khan Academy video, you can reference for that. Here we go. I successfully found it here. I simply searched for matrix multiplication here, and this is what we have. So we're just going to do a basic matrix multiply, uh, same as what Khan will describe in his video. And instead of tediously taking you through 
setting up the right rows with the right columns and things like that. I'm just going to go ahead and pause the recording, change all the values, and we'll go from there. That was more tedious than I needed today, but I eventually got it. And you, I leave it to you as the watcher, <laughs> as an exercise to figure out. You can kind of see the pattern here, row zero, row one, row two, but then the columns stay the same here. And this is on the left, the left, oh, come on, the left operand. And then on the right side, we have all zeros here on the rows, but then we have column zero one two zero one two zero one two and anyway that pattern follows pretty much what goes through here if you can if you wish to work it out great if not type it in and let's go uh... let me bring this up here and prove to you that the tests pass in fact the tests were quite nice because i relied on them heavily to make sure that i had these values back here correct before i uh, resumed recording so there we go